morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Sheely. We'll be joining together this on the last Sunday of the church year, focused on the fact that Christ is our shepherd, that he leads us and restores us to his kingdom. With that, let us focus with our hymn, hymn 735, Have No Fear, Little Flock. And in this hymn, you will have no fear because Christ is your shepherd. page 219 if you have a Lutheran service book hymnal uh, in your home. We'll begin with the common versicles. Thank you. 
reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16, and verses 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when he's among his sheep that have been scattered. So will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I'll bring back the stray, and I'll bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, Thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I'll set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 25, 28. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjugation, in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the last of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his enemies. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> shepherd is, verses 1 to 4.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to live in a revival. Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to live in an exile. And Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to be led by God as his shepherd. Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to live in a revival. When he was a young boy, Hilkiah, the priest of the time, found the book of the law while they, rest they were restoring the temple, which then led to King Josiah's reforms where the whole nation celebrated together the Passover of the Lord the first time in many, many years. It was a golden age for God's people where Ezekiel was able to watch them parade out all those foreign gods, all of those idols out of the temple to throw them and trash them and burn them and destroy them. It was a good time to be a young Judean Israelite at that time. That's where Ezekiel first came into this world. And yet, the next three kings of Judah abandoned Josiah's revival. And so Ezekiel saw the turn from the golden age of Judah following God to continual and slow destruction of God's word in the lives of the people. In fear and despair, God's people failed to trust God and sought their own way. Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to live in exile. After these three kings failed to follow God's law, God finally brought about the destruction of Judah. It wasn't all at once, no. First, in 605 B.C., while Ezekiel was still a young man, maybe around when he was 25 years old, King Nebuchadnezzar came into Judah and took captive 10,000 Judeans from Jerusalem and from the surrounding countries. He led them into captivity, and then he left the poorest of the land to occupy Jerusalem, to run the vineyards, to do the field work, to do the labor. And yet, after five years in exile, when Ezekiel was around 30 years old, he would have then taken, if he was still in Judah, he would have taken on his role. Because for the last 25 years, he'd been training to be a priest in the temple at Jerusalem. And yet after five years in exile, at the time where he would have taken on his full temple duties as a full priest before God, at that time, he was sitting by the bank of a canal in Babylon. He wasn't in the temple. He wasn't in Jerusalem. He was exiled. He was among those 10,000 led away from Judah. And yet, God called him all the same to be a prophet in exile. God called Ezekiel at that time and gave Ezekiel a vision of God's presence leaving the temple, of, very, of the very presence of God going into exile with the fellow Judeans. And yet, Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to be led by God as his shepherd. Throughout the course of Ezekiel's 20 to 30 year ministry, 
He was able to give many prophetic revelations. He predicted the final fall of Jerusalem. He predicted the final conquest of his fellow countrymen because they still did not turn to God. He predicted the fall of various other nations. He predicted many consequences for sin in this world. All because God gave him the utterances to speak his words. But yet, Ezekiel also knew what it meant to be led by God, his shepherd. And so, Ezekiel, in our text for today, preaches a message, a message of restoration, a message of return, a message that shows God's people might have been abandoned by their fellow Judean shepherds. They might have been led astray. They might have been scattered to the winds. But because those leaders failed so spectacularly, God, God himself, will have to take over their job. As he says in Ezekiel 34, verse 11 to 12, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As the shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered. Did you hear the active involvement that our God will have for those Judean exiles. He himself will search for his sheep. He will seek them out. This isn't some hired hand. This isn't some person put in his position. No, this is the very creator God doing the work of a shepherd searching for his sheep, seeking them out and rescuing them from all the places where they have been scattered. Our God would go for those Judean exiles. He would find them. He would bring them back to himself. As he says in Ezekiel 34 verse 13, I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. God will restore them. He will bring them out. He will gather them. He will bring them back to the promised land. And then he continues. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured. And I will strengthen the weak. Ezekiel 34, 15 to 16. God does the work of a shepherd. And for these Judean exiles, he will be their shepherd. He will bring them to those green pastures to lie down. He will give them all the blessings of his promises. As he says, he will seek the lost and will bring back the strayed. But not only that, he will bind up their injuries and then he will strengthen the weak. Ezekiel knew what it meant to have God as his shepherd. And so he proclaimed those words to the Judean exiles. He proclaimed those words to let them know ultimately that God will rescue his flock. In Ezekiel 34, 22 through 24, he says, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I'll set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. This is what it means to have God as your shepherd. 
as these Judean exiles were depressed and led to a foreign country, God gives them the vision of what the future holds for them, where he will set up his servant David as king and shepherd over them, where David himself will feed them, where David himself will be their shepherd, and the Lord will be their God. Now you might be asking yourself, I thought you said, Pastor, that God would be their shepherd, and now you're saying that David will be their shepherd. Well, it's as simple as many of you probably realized. Jesus is the son of David. Jesus is God's servant, David, the shepherd of the restored Israel. Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to live in an exile. And we are a people who know what it means to live in a world that has exiled ourselves from God. Babylon might not be knocking down our door, but instead we have let our fear of the world drive us into despair. We have forgotten God. We have forgotten what it means to follow his ways. How many of us have lost hope in the midst of this pandemic? How many of us have lost hope in the midst of this chaotic political season and the chaotic election year? How many of us have lost hope in the midst of this infamous year of 2020? How many of us have looked to ourselves, have looked away from God and gone into exile, forgetting about God's laws, burying them in the midst of the temple, just like they were when Ezekiel was able to find them. We don't look to God's law for how we are to live our lives. We instead exile ourselves by putting our fear, love, and trust in things that comfort us. Money, sex, power, sports, rest and relaxation, free time, hobbies. We put our fear, love, and trust in these things far above our fear, love, and trust in our God. We, like the people of Ezekiel's day, are scattered to the winds as we abandon God's will for our lives and follow our own sinful desires. Ezekiel was a man who knew what it meant to live in exile, just like we are men and women who know what it feels like to live in exile from our God in exile to our own sinful desires, in fear and despair, we fail to trust our shepherd and seek our own way. And yet, while we are scattered in exile, God declares, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered. Just like Ezekiel, we also know what it means to be led by God as our shepherd. Because God has searched for us. Throughout history, throughout time, God has brought us back to himself. Just like a shepherd seeking out his flock, God has searched for and sought us out. And even more, he has rescued us 
from all the places where we've exiled ourselves. As he says, I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. Ezekiel 34, verse 13. God not only searches us out, but he brings us out. He gathers us together. He brings them into his land, into the kingdom of God, into the place where God dwells. And sure, it might not seem like it right now, but it's true. We live in the kingdom of God. And although it hasn't yet reached its final fulfillment, that doesn't change the fact that as you hear God's word proclaimed, as you take the sacraments through God's body and blood and through the baptism, you are in the kingdom of God. And God will be the shepherd of his sheep. As he says, I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. Ezekiel 34, 15 to 16. God does this for us. He does this now. He brings us back. He binds up our wounds. He restores us from exile to his people. And then he strengthens the weak. He feeds us with his body and blood. God does this as our shepherd. In Ezekiel 34, 22, 22 to 24, again, he says, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. Again, look at what God is doing for us. Just like he did for the Judeans in exile back in Ezekiel's day. He will rescue his flock. They will no longer be a prey. In fact, through baptism, God has already rescued you. He has removed the devil from your back. He has made you no longer prey but a sheep within his sheepfold. And yes, he will judge between sheep and sheep. He will judge and declare you to be his. And he will set up over you the one shepherd, the son of David, Jesus. Which is why we can say these words have been fulfilled. And yet, because Christ has promised to return, we know they are not yet in their final fulfillment. Because God will feed us just like he does now, he will feed us then with his heavenly banquet. He will feed us and be their shepherd. And where the kingdom of God is, there is God. Because God will be our God. For all eternity. When we started this worship service, we sang the song, Have No Fear, Little Flock. How true these words are. Because God is our shepherd. Have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, little flock. For the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock. Which, of course, brings you to the second verse. Have good cheer, little flock, because the, God, the Father has chosen you. You now can have cheer. And the Father keeps you in his love forever. So have good cheer, little flock. And then praise the Lord high above. Praise the Lord high above. For he does stoop down to heal you. He does uplift and restore you. Have no fear and praise the Lord high above. And so in thanks and praise, we do raise our hearts to God. 
because he stays close beside us. He lives with us in his kingdom. Where he is, there we are also. And so with thankful hearts, we raise them to God. We thank God, our Father. We thank God, his Son, because he is our shepherd. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we lift our hearts, we have good cheer, we praise the Lord, and we have no fear. Jesus, the Lord God himself, has sought us out like a shepherd seeking out his flock, he has searched for us and rescued us from the exile of fear and despair. He has redeemed us through his death and resurrection. He has restored us into his kingdom. And now he feeds us through his word and sacraments. He gives us peace, binds our wounds, strengthens the weak, and keeps us with him in his kingdom. He is the Lord, and he has spoken. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now worship God with our tithes and offerings, and since we are online right now, I ask that you take a moment to either fill out a check or to contact Carol, our treasurer, so that way we can continue the work of God's kingdom even as we continue worshiping in our online environment. And with that, we offer our prayer and praise to God by chanting the Te, De the Te Deum, which is printed on page 7 and 8 of your bulletin.
the prayer of the church, we will conclude each collect by saying, Let us pray to the Lord, and you will respond with, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ our shepherd, and for the strengthening of God's people in this true faith and their baptismal life in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christ, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, for all who faithfully confess the saving name of Christ, and for the protection of the Lord to extend over us against the devil, the world, and our own sinful selves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For God's people in this place, for the mission and work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit, and a spirit of cooperation and harmony in our life together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For Trinity Lutheran Preschool, where our young are prepared for their life as God's people by baptism and faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those who have wandered from the flock of God, for the faithful shepherds who gather them in through the voice of God's word, for our forgiveness and for our willingness to forgive others in Christ's name, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For our president and governor, our newly elected leaders and all in authority over us, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the hungry and homeless, for the unemployed and underemployed, for those who work in disaster relief, and especially for all those affected by the pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those afflicted by illness of body or mind, and for those who care for them, especially Lolita Olston, Terry Blackwell, Ed Bonds, Gary Broadhagen, Bill Brown, Murray Duggar, Joyce Green, Janice Harvey, David Henrington, Jerry Henneman, Trudy Hoyman, Linda Hunter, Mary Mahaffey, Michael and Priscilla Merritt, Tate Schaefer, Shirley Schlofeld, Jimmy Sukla, Paula Stewart, Bill Whithands, and Colton Woodard, that with God's strength they may be kept, they may be kept through, patience, through patience and delivered to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest and as our shepherd. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For you alone we give honor, we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 9 of your bulletin with the Kyrie. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Your Son, as judge of the living and the dead, 
Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pray together the Collect for Grace, printed on the top of page 10 of your bulletin. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
blessed shepherd, Jesus our Savior, has brought us into his kingdom. And here we are, safe. Here he not only keeps us safe, but he binds our wounds. He rescues us, restores us, strengthens the weak. God, our shepherd, has brought us to him. And he will bring us to life everlasting in his kingdom. Amen. As far as announcements go, uh, in the midst of this uh, pandemic, uh, Bible study will be moved to online as we will do it uh, via the, <clears throat> the free conference call teleconference. And you can access that by going to the uh, church website and getting the link or by using your phone and calling the phone number 425-436-6358. Again, that's 425-436-6358. And then putting in the access code 367780-POUND. 367780-POUND. And you can join us at 1015 for Bible study each week. Uh, additionally, this week, I will be taking some time off to go visit family for Thanksgiving and uh, hoping I can get there and back in between the weather that's supposed to come. Uh, but uh, in the midst of this, though, I ask that you look and trust to Jesus as your shepherd, that you rely in him, even as you stay safe and worship at home, even as you allow this world that's been broken by sin to run its course, waiting in eager expectation for when Christ will come again to restore all things in that final fulfillment of his promise as our shepherd. With that, I pray that you have a glorious day and join in as God's flock.